Hey guys, welcome to I've Got a Disney Dream. I am Joni. If you are new here, welcome. If you're a returning visitor, thank you so much for coming back. Um, we are going to be talking today about Walt Disney World tickets. Disney has just implemented a new way of doing tickets. I did notice that my most popular video seems to be my video I did a couple years ago on the Walt Disney World ticket system. So I thought with the changes that they just did, this would be a fantastic time to do a nice update for you guys. The information in this video will be great both for first time visitors as well as Disney veterans. I'm going to be going over all of the basics and the things that have actually stayed the same, as well as all of the changes that they just did. And make sure that you stick around because later I'm going to be going over some great money saving ideas for you as well. Now I should do a little disclaimer that I am not affiliated with the Walt Disney World Company, so any opinions that I give or anything like that are strictly my own and does not reflect anything with the Walt Disney World Company. So I hope you will stick around and let's get into it. Regarding age groups for tickets, children 3 and under are free. Children 3 to 9 are considered a child ticket and anyone ages 10 and up are considered adults. Pricing tiers for the amount of days are basically the more you play, the less you pay. So what that means is the more days on your Walt Disney World ticket, you will be paying less per individual day. So a one day park ticket is going to cost you a lot more for that individual day than if you were to get say a seven day ticket or a 10 day ticket, your price for each individual day is going to be a lot less. There are three tiers of tickets for the parks. You have your base ticket, there is a park hopper ticket and a park hopper plus ticket. A base ticket will only allow you access to one of the Walt Disney theme parks on a specific day. A park hopper ticket allows you to go to any of the four Walt Disney World theme parks on each day. And the Park Hopper Plus option is the exact same thing as the Park Hopper, but you get some additional features. Unlike the park hopper portion of your ticket where you will get unlimited access on each day to the four theme parks, your additional offerings will be credit based. So say that you purchase a seven day ticket, you will get seven credits and each time that you use one of those offerings, it takes away a credit. So say you want to go to one of the water parks and then you want to play around a mini golf. That's going to cost you two credits even if you do it on the same day. If you didn't purchase the Park Hopper Plus option to be able to get access to the Disney water parks, you can purchase one day tickets to the water parks. The main thing that has changed is how they are now pricing out their tickets. It used to be where it was kind of like a straightforward number and it didn't matter what time of year you went, it was just based on the type of ticket you wanted. Say if you wanted a Park Hopper versus a, a base ticket. It's now kind of a date based pricing structure. So seasons and dates that are typically more crowded are probably going to cost you a little bit more money. What I've heard Disney is trying to do with this new system is kind of dispersing the crowds because there's been a lot of rumble about crowd levels at Disney lately. So they're giving you a little bit more of an incentive on going when it's a little less crowded. The time frame in which you have to actually use your tickets has also changed a bit. You still do not have to use them on consecutive days, but they used to give you 14 days from the start of your ticket to be able to use your uh, ticket in totality. Now they seem to be giving you like a three day grace period. For example, say you purchase a seven day ticket, your start date of your vacation is July 7th. You will actually have until July 16th to use all of your tickets. So you do have an extra three days. So say you wanted to do something in the middle where you're not going to the parks, you do have a few extra days to be able to use your tickets before your days expire. So along with those changes, they have also introduced a flex day option. So you can add this on when you put your tickets into the cart, this option will be there. And essentially it kind of goes back to the way that it used to be. So if you purchase the flex day option, you will still have the 14 days from the start date of your ticket. So when you do add this on, you don't have to pick a start date for your vacation. There is a little stipulation. So 
I don't know if they're going to keep this option for a long period of time. I did see that it said that your start date of your vacation has to be on or before December 31st of 2019. So I don't know if they're going to phase out this option once that date hits. The pricing for this option does seem to vary greatly based on the number of days on your tickets. When looking into it, I didn't really notice any difference in price, whether you had added on a Park Hopper or the Park Hopper Plus option to your tickets, or if you just have a base ticket. I didn't notice any price difference there. It seemed like the only difference was the number of days on your ticket. Since the price of the tickets will be varying based on the days of your actual vacation, I'm not going to be able to give you an exact price on what your tickets are going to cost you, but I can look up some examples for you. So what I have done is I have picked random dates um, for each season. I did, you know, winter of this year as well as spring, summer, and fall of next year. So that way I could give you some hard numbers so you can kind of compare uh, what might work best for you and your family. What I have done is I've priced out seven day tickets. I would say that is probably the most average number of days on a you know family vacation. So that's kind of what I was going for. So touching back on the idea of the more you play, the less you pay, Disney has a list of starting prices for their tickets. So again, it's going to vary based on when you're going, but this is kind of the starting point. For a base ticket, a one-day ticket starting price is $109. Now for a 10-day base ticket, your price is going to be $44 a day. That is a $65 difference per day than just purchasing a one-day ticket. That is a huge savings. So definitely if you can um, swing doing multiple days, definitely look into a multi-day ticket versus a one-day ticket because you are going to get more for your money. It seems like no matter the number of days on your ticket, the price difference to upgrade is actually the same, even though your ticket itself might be less or more expensive at a different price point, the upgrade price for the options seem to be about the same. Any of the multi-day tickets that I put in, whether it was a seven day, a three day, a 10 day, any of the, the ranges that I put in, I noticed the exact same price jump from the base ticket to Park Hopper, and that was $75 difference, and then the base ticket to the Park Hopper Plus option was $100 difference. Now, I am not sure, I will um, let you guys know in a little text box here if that is the same for a one-day ticket. So if you're already going to, you know, do park hopping and you were thinking about going to the water parks, definitely, you know, look into the Park Hopper Plus option because it's really going to save you money in the long run because, you know, the, the price of the upgrade is actually cheaper than a one-day ticket to, you know, a water park. So definitely something to keep in mind that might save you money in the long run. Now, speaking of saving money, I do have some great tips for you guys on how to actually save money on your tickets. There is a company that we have used several times over, um, Undercover Tourist, if you've not heard of them. I will put the link in the description box below for you guys. It is not an affiliate link, I just really stand behind the company. We've had zero problems with them. They offer 
wonderful discounts on your Disney Park tickets and they are a authorized seller of the tickets so you don't have to worry about you know going to Disney and you know are they authentic or anything like that they are an authorized company so definitely you know look into them and see if you could save yourself some money also if you are military there are military discounts available they have discounts and I believe special packages for our military both active and retired so definitely make sure to check that out. I believe there's a tab on the Walt Disney World website that explains the current promotions for our military. If you are a Florida resident, there are also options for you guys as well. They offer discounts on uh, annual passes as well as you know various types of tickets that are actually only available to Florida residents. So definitely when you go to the Disney website, check out what options there are for Florida residents to see if there's something that might work better for you than just your, you know, standard tickets. Or if you are going for an annual pass, definitely look into how much you could save for that because I think it's a decent amount of money actually. Speaking of discounts on annual passes, uh, Disney Vacation Club members also get a discount on your annual passes. I believe that their discount is the exact same as a Florida resident. Um, I'm not entirely sure if they've changed that or not, but I believe that's the way that it's been in the past. So definitely if you are a DVC member, check to see what sort of discount you can get on an annual pass if that's, you know, something that you want to do if you are going, you know, multiple times of the year. An annual pass itself could be, you know, a way to save money as well. If you are planning on going multiple times of the year, price out your tickets. See what it's going to cost you on the amount of days that you think you're going to be going and see if the price of an annual pass is going to save you money. It might be a little bit more expensive or it actually might be cheaper. Now keep in mind with your annual passes you do also get discounts. So if there is say a $10 difference in getting say if you're going twice two sets of tickets versus getting your annual pass, if you're going to use any of the discounts that you get whether it be food or merchandise or something like that, that might actually sway you one direction or another of actually getting the annual pass or not. So make sure to keep that in mind as well. All right, guys. Well, I've finally gotten through all of the ticket options for you guys. I know it can be very confusing. So I tried to, you know, make it as basic as I could because there's a lot of options out there. As you guys have kind of figured out, um, if you didn't know already, Disney is expensive. So I want to make sure that you get the best option for you and your family. If you have any questions or comments, um, please put them down below and let me know. I'd be happy to try and answer any questions the best that I possibly can. Thank you so much for sticking around. If you liked what you saw in this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I do try to do different tip videos. I also have done um, various vacation vlogs and my favorite things to do at Walt Disney World and stuff like that. Most of the stuff that I do here on my channel is Walt Disney World based. I have done some, you know, random videos before, but most of the stuff on this channel will be Disney based. So if you are a Disney fan or are planning a Walt Disney World vacation, make sure that you stick around on the channel and hit the bell notification button. That way, the next time I put out a video, you will be notified by YouTube that that video goes up. If you are on Twitter, make sure to follow me at I've Got a Diz Dream, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you later.